Hello guys, I really have some bad news, really bad news and uh, I want to tell you about this bad news and also I'll tell you some good news and uh, please I want if possible you just listen to the end of this video because this news affects you and me. It's not only bad for me but it's also bad for you and you have to listen this and also share this video to as many vid people as possible because this news is going to affect you and is going to affect me and all of us. And you have to listen. Please listen to the end. Please. Now, I will start with the bad news first and I'll come to the good news. Now, the bad news is several years ago, very many years ago, uh, God decided to make man in his own image uh, he made man in his own image the bible says let us make man in our own image what is that image it was body soul and spirit L the same way we have a body we have a soul and we have a spirit the body is a representation of the son the soul is a representation of the father and the spirit the holy spirit now, after he made man, God set man on a beautiful garden called the Garden of Eden. And he told him, all you need to do is enjoy, stay here, and enjoy everything that I've given you. And uh, since God did not want to create robots, he did something. He gave man something we call a free will. He told him, I don't want to create a robot, so I'm going to give you a free will so that you do things in your own way, the way you accept. So there are two different ways that I'm going to give you. Two kind of choices. He told man, you will either trust in me, okay, and I will do everything for you and I'll take care of you, or you will trust in yourself and you are going to know what is right and wrong, and you're going to die. There is a consequence. If you decide to trust in yourself, you will die. Because I created you, and I know this. And he told man, the choice is yours. And he set two types of trees in the Garden of Eden. One was called the Tree of Life, and the other one is the Tree of Knowledge. If you eat from the Tree of Life, you will believe in me and you will continue trusting in me and I'll take care of you. Don't think about anything. Don't think about all things. I will take care of you as your father. But if you decide to eat from the tree of knowledge, then take care of yourself. But remember, you're going to die. But then, man decided, let me take the bad option. Let me, let me, let me, let me do it my way. Man decided, let me eat from the tree of knowledge. And immediately man ate from the, the tree of knowledge, his spirit died. Because God is true, and what he says is true, his spirit died. Now, when the spirit dies, remember, the spirit controls both the body and the soul. The spirit is just the same way. You can, you can talk about a ball, a football. The spirit is the air inside the football. And the soul is the tube inside the ball. And the outer skin is the body. So when the spirit is out, it means the tube and the outer cover of the ball cannot function. So the spirit, when it died, it meant the outer cover, the body would die. And also the soul would die in hell. Okay. Now, Adam, being a sinner, having refused what God gave him, he also begot a son, several children. And we see a good example in Genesis 5 verse 3. It says that Adam lived a certain number of years and he begot a son in his own image and his own likeness and he named him Seth. Now, why does the Bible tell us that Adam begot a son in his own image. It means this son was born in the fallen state. He was born a sinner. This man was born separated from God. 
This man was born in the same characters of Adam. And, and of course it went on and on. All descendants of Adam, they were born in the same nature. In sin and separated from God. And uh, God told us one thing in the book of Romans 6, 23. That the wages of sin is death. So if you're born a sinner, you're definitely supposed to go to hell. That's your destiny. You will die in hell. So nobody is immune to this because we are all children of Adam. That's the bad news. That's really bad. Now, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Because this affects you and it affects me. But now, let me give you some good news. Let me explain to you something. Some really good news. Now, we understand that God is really merciful. And he's a loving father. Now, in the Garden of Eden, Adam felt separated and he felt naked after he sinned against God. After he said, I will trust my, my choice and I will not trust in you, God. When he stopped believing in God and said, I will believe in myself, he sinned against God and he felt naked. And we see this one in Genesis 3 verse 9 to 10. The Bible says, the Lord called Adam and said to him, where are you? Adam said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. But God did something because he's a loving father. He did something. Yes, I know, Adam, you're supposed to die. But I'm going to do something. God showed him grace. What is grace? Getting what you don't deserve. Adam des deserved to die immediately then. then. But God said, okay, let me hold, let me cover you for a little while. Let me cover your sin for a little while, your nakedness for a little while. And the Bible tells us in Genesis 3 verse 21, And the Lord made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Now, when God is making clothes of skin, what happens to the animal which had the skin? It means God killed an animal, shed the blood of an innocent animal, which was not even involved in all this mess, so that he could cover the sin of a sinner, Adam. That is where we get the beginning of the word atonement. What is atonement? Atonement is Covering for someone who is a sinner. Taking the place of someone who is a sinner. This animal which God shed the blood of covered the sin of Adam for a little while. Okay? Do you understand up to there? Now, later on, sin became so much rampant in the society that now human beings had to cover their sins quite often. Over and over and over because the sin was so much, it was already introduced into the world. And our father Adam was, you know, all his children were being born in sin. So they were all sinners and sin was so much that people had to cover their sin often. So that at least they can buy some time because it's really terrible. And we see a good example, Abel, he, he covered his sin with the blood of an animal sacrifice. You remember Abel sacrificed an animal to God. And God accepted that covering, that sacrifice. And we see Cain. Cain tried to cover his sin with the, his good farm works. He was a farmer. He tried to bring some oranges, some watermelon, some bananas, and tried to tell God, this is what I want to cover my sin with. And God said, I do not accept your filthy works. I accept blood only. Now, you may ask, now, why God? Why do you accept blood? Why do you want blood? This is the answer. Leviticus 17 Verse 11, it says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Oh, the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to, to you upon the altar to make atonement for your sins. 
for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. So the blood is where the life is. And the wages of sin is death. So when an animal sheds blood, it means life has been taken out. And that wage has been paid. The wage of sin. Now we get the point why the blood was important. Now, let's continue. Moses came and God gave him a set of instructions called the law. Now, what was the law? The law was basically instructions for the people who would find themselves sinning in a more organized way. God organized some set of instructions what someone has to do, whoever sins. Okay, God said in the law that whoever sins, he will have to sacrifice a young male innocent animal, a lamb or a young heifer, so that he can cover his sin. This is what is called remission of sins. Now, what is remission? Remission, it means the sin has gone for a while, but it will come back. Are you getting my point? For example, if someone has cancer and he does some chemotherapy and he gets a little bit better, the cancer is not gone. The cancer is only on remission. It has gone for a while, but it will come back. That is what remission means. But now, sin was so much and people were sinning so much and they, they could not be able to keep these instructions. They could not be able to keep this law. The law was eating them up because they, want, they have to do this. Immediately they have sacrificed an animal. They are going back home. They abuse someone. They have to go back again. You are coming back from the, the altar sacrificing an animal. You go, you steal, you, you do something wrong. You have to go back again. Nobody could be able to keep the law. So God came up with a plan, a very good plan, and a better plan. And uh, God decided, let me come down myself and take away that sin forever. This sin which is eating people, let me take it away forever. And we see this when uh, John the Baptist was baptizing people, and he saw Jesus coming afar. He looked and he said, Behold, in John 1, 29, it says, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. There are two key words here, the Lamb of God. Why is Jesus called the Lamb? Because he was coming to be slain and his blood would atone for the sin of the world. And it will not only remit the sins, but it would take away the sins. You see, the Lamb of God, which taketh away, not covers the sin, but takes it away once and for all. Mm -hmm. But you may be asking, how can we prove that Jesus was really God? How can we prove that Jesus was really God? coming to save mankind. Maybe Jesus was some, uh, you know, some angel or he was the archangel or he was a created being or how can we prove that Jesus was really God himself coming down? The Bible tells us in John chapter 1 verses 1 to 3, it says, in the beginning was the word. So mark this, this person called word. In the beginning was the word, okay? Whoever is called word. And the word was with God. So whoever is called word, he was with God in the beginning. And the word was God. Whoever is called word, he was God. Mm -hmm. Make some sense, right? And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Hmm, that makes some sense. So meaning, this person called Word, he was in the beginning, he was with God, and he was God. And everything was created by him. Remember back again, when God was creating man, he said, let us make man in our own image. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Jesus is called the begotten Son, the Son of God. He was in the beginning. And let's confirm also in John 
chapter 1 verse 14 it says and the word was made flesh oh the one called word he now became flesh and dwelt among us wow and we beheld his glory and the glory is of the begotten of the father full of grace and truth beautiful beautiful so whoever is called word and we understand the word is god the word is jesus then he is god and the bible t tells us that great is the mystery of godliness that god was manifest in the flesh it is so unimaginable how did god become man so great mystery but god did it he came himself so that he can he can atone for the sin of man okay now remember something just before jesus died he said it is finished he said it is finished now you may ask what was this that was finished let me tell you what was finished what was finished it is the payment of the sin of everyone in the world the payment was finished god forgave hitler he forgave mussolini he forgave you he forgave any sinner he forgave everyone it is finished and uh, he shed his blood like that young young male innocent lamb you remember in the law of moses that they had to take a young a, a young male innocent animal lamb so jesus became that lamb young male innocent he was without any sin so he became that lamb and finally god took away the sin the sin of man okay now this remains the big question i'm sure many people are saying okay now if there is no more sin if we have all been forgiven then why do people still go to hell why do people still go to hell if we are all forgiven mm -hmm. this is the answer it is because they have never believed they have never believed that they were forgiven john 3 16 it says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes will not perish but will have everlasting life believing let me give you a good example of this believing let's say for example your house is about to be locked you have some rent arrears and then you call me and you tell me keith i'm really in big rent arrears and i don't know what to do please pay for me and then i go to the bank and i pay for you your house rent arrears and i tell you go to the bank and sign and accept that payment when you accept that payment the money will be transferred to the uh, the the house owner and it will be paid and then you keep on calling me and tell me please keith pay for me what am i going to tell you please stop calling me go to the bank i already paid sign and accept that payment so that it can be transferred what is going to happen if you not go to the bank and accept that payment your house will be locked will i be there to be blamed no you will not blame me i already paid that is exactly what jesus did at the cross he paid for the sins of everyone so that whosoever will accept that payment will not perish but will have everlasting life but people they don't want to accept that payment they say oh no i have to do this i have to do that i have to do good things i have to, I have, I have to stop doing this fast before i come my friends you have been forgiven your drunkenness your bad things everything you have ever done the bible says come as you are you are already forgiven just believe and uh, you may ask how then do i believe how do i believe how do i tell god yes i believe now there are five key points you have to understand before you believe number one you have to understand that you are lost in your sins in need of a savior unless you understand you're lost you can never look for a savior number two you have to hear the good news 
you hear the good news. Understand the bad news first, and then you hear the good news. Or, which is also called the gospel. The gospel means the good news of what Jesus did for you at the cross. And after you hear the good news, you understand the gospel, okay? Or you understand the good news. You understand, oh, Jesus was at the cross and he died for me. He shed his blood for me. Okay, it was for me. It was not for him. His death was not for himself. He died for me. He did this one so that he can atone for my sin. Now I understand. You understand it. And after you understand, you believe the gospel, the good news. You see, the reason why we have to understand is because we don't believe from our minds. We believe from our hearts. When something is in your mind, it has to be understood so that after you understand it, it comes from the mind to the heart. And then it is from the heart that we believe and we are, we get righteousness. And then immediately you believe. Then you confess to God what you have believed. You see, confession does not come before believing. Why? Because you cannot confess what you don't know. You have to know something and confess it. If you go to a court of law and tell the judge, I want to confess that I saw that thief and you never saw that thief, then you are a liar. If you're confessing what you don't know, then you're a liar. And that's why the sinner's prayer does not save. If you say a prayer so that you can be saved, that's a lie. You're not saved. Are you seeing the point here? So it's really important for you to hear, understand first. You understand that you're lost. You understand the bad news that you're lost and you're born in sin. You hear the good news. That Jesus died for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scripture. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And you understand the gospel. That this was all for me. Not for anything else. And then you believe the gospel. From your heart. And then you confess to God in a prayer. You tell him. Jesus now I understand. Without any shadow of a doubt. That you died for my sins. You were buried and you rose again the third day according to the scriptures. I accept you and I accept this payment of sin by faith. Please be my Lord and Savior. My friends, once you understand this and you believe this and you confess it out, you are saved, sealed and sanctified unto the day of redemption.